Welcome to Christian Assembly of Schriever, a full gospel Bible believing church. We are a people who love God, who worship Him and praise Him. Please join us now for a great word that the Lord has for us today.
Christ behind me, your 
Oh, 
of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is unloved, your for more of you so that we can become stronger in you so that we can continue to rise daily and fight the good fight because you have equipped us and we are your children father let us go boldly where you lead
You are healer. You are the strength. Father, we trust you to touch each need. And Father, I pray right now for this offering. God, I pray that you would just bless it. Father, bless the giver. Father, may it reach out and touch those who need you more. We thank you, Jesus, more. In Jesus' name. excited and very honored to to finally be up here and be able to uh, address you guys and, and be able to kind of I don't know more of a testimony or tell God what is what is God's what God is doing with me within the last couple of months and uh, so when pastor asked of course I was excited and I looked at sister Sherry and I said it's Halloween <laughs> it's hallelujah night so she said, what are you going to talk about? And rather than the Brother Ronnie saying, it's Jesus, I said, I'm going to talk about ghosts. And she looked at me. I said, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know? And so she looked at me again, and, I, and, and then I, I kind of got out the box. I'm like, I could put on a costume. <laughs> and then she gave me that Elvis face. That <laughs> The lip went up like, what? And so just the other night, I was sitting here, and I was talking with Pastor Troy, and Pastor Troy asked me, he, I was telling him the story, he said, so you're going to wear a suit? <laughs> I gave him the Elvis face. <laughs> what? <laughs> and so I, I'm excited to be up here. It's, it's, it's an honor to be up here. And, um, you know, the title of my message today is Trusting God When Life Doesn't Quite Make Sense. And, and, and so I know a lot of people are going through that right now with the storm, with COVID, and, and just things that are, that are going on in their lives. So first off, Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and we just ask you, again, to be inside of this building, Father, and to be with us. Lord, I ask you to, 
to use me again, Father, as a conduit. Father, just to be able to, to take your word and deliver it where it needs to be. So, Father, again today, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So how many of y'all know that lightning, lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place? <laughs> that was my next question. What happens when it does? What happens when you do have something that happens like that? You know, as many of you know, Sherry uh, lost her dad back in May. We did the funeral services here May 15th, and uh, that was a, a moment for us that, um, I don't know, we kind of struggled with, because my relationship with him was, yeah, he was my father-in-law, I loved him, I somewhat knew that he loved me, but yeah, and that's kind of how it was. And it was up until the, the, the last moments that we kind of seen how much he cared for us more or less behind the scenes. Like just, like we knew that he loved us, but the behind the scenes stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I tell this story all the time, but the one time that I thought the end was near, I helped him to the restroom, brought him back to bed and called into work the next morning. And I said, look, I'm not going to make it. Father-in-law is not, not doing good. So I walk outside to go to his room, and he's sitting there, and he says, hey, good morning, big guy. And I'm like, what did you do with my father-in-law? Because this is not the same guy. So, you know, but we knew. We knew things. We, we knew that he loved us, but we didn't. I don't know. It was just, it's kind of different now because we see the things that he's done. We see the things that, that we've been through. And so once he passed, we kind of started yeah, somewhat cleaning up his room and going through, Sister Missy knows, going through some of his stuff. But we pretty much left his shed and, and left his, his smoking room alone. We didn't touch it, not because we didn't want to, but we didn't want to. We just, we didn't have the need or the want to move anything or to do anything, so we didn't mess with it. And so it, it just, it, it kind of became, you know, the, the, the day that he made the decision to go on hospice was a terrible day for us, but he made the decision, and he would tell us, you know, I, I'm, my, my body's weak, I, I can't go anymore, I'm tired, and he made those kind of comments, and, and, and so we, you know, we honored that. And so, like I said, we laid him to rest. We, we did the funeral here May 15th. And, and um, so approximately about three months after that, Hurricane Ida made its presence. And, uh, you, you know, we, we made comments, or I made comments, about how lucky we were or how blessed we were to have him to go and be with the Lord before something like this. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, how or what would we have done with him in this time? Where would, where would, where would we have gone? What would we have done? He was pretty much bedridden. And, and, and so your mind starts to, starts to wonder. And, and, but the Lord took him. And, and you know, it was, it was the, the I, I guess, the, I don't know, just the, the, a blessing for him to be able to go and be with the Lord instead of be here suffering through this. So many of y'all know Ida left us houseless. It didn't leave us homeless. It left us houseless. Okay? And, and you know, our, our home is wherever we live. You know, we, we are, we truly, I mean, we took that little 35-foot fifth wheel and made something of it, right? It was our home. And uh, so, you know, as we were away, we heard different reports from different neighbors and stuff like that. And, and one neighbor called and, and he said, man, he said, looking at the front of your house, you're missing some, some siding, but everything looks good. So we were like, okay. Well, the next morning we were up and we were still in, in Livingston, Texas, about an hour, hour and a half north of Houston. And uh, another neighbor called and says, well, your awning is gone. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I got this. It's just an awning. Well, then she starts to tell us that the awning, awning took off about three foot of roof, about three quarters of the way down the house. And so then it hit me that father-in-law's room where he stayed, that awning was the roof, or as the, as the um, hospice nurse called it, his shed. When, when she called the funeral home to come get him, he said, he's outside in the shed. And I'm like, I built this with my own two hands. This ain't no shed, woman. So anyhow... So that portion of it was, was gone, okay? And um, 
it just kind of hit me a little bit there. My anxiety levels went through the roof. <laughs> there was no roof there. <laughs> through the roof. See what I did there? So my anxiety levels went through the roof. It was, it, it, it was, it was crazy. You know, uh, I just, I was angry because I worked all my life. Not all my life, but most of my life. To, my parents are here and he's sitting there laughing at me because I said I worked all my life. So, but I worked all my life to, to, for us to have what we have. And it, you know, it was, it was my double wide trailer with the polyester curtains in the redwood deck. You understand what I'm saying? Sherry was the queen of that double wide trailer with the polyester curtains in the redwood deck. It was ours. It was paid for. It wasn't much, but it was ours. I, I was, I was scared. Where's my wife and kids going to live? The two dogs. What are we going to do? We've got Nikki and AJ, the two babies and, and their two dogs. What are we going to do? This is our place. This is our home. This is where we go day to day for 51 years to that same piece of property every day. What are we going to do? I was scared. I was hurt. Why? Why would God do this? Why would this happen to me? So I was scared. I was hurt. A lot of emotions running. It's the only home my two boys ever knew. A lot of emotions. And you know, sometimes... <laughs> It's funny how God works, but I would say, you know, if the storm comes, takes the house, we can get us a new one. I was joking. <laughs> you know, he, he literally took that serious, and now the storm come, took the house, and we get the new house, okay? So God will do things, okay? And, and, and so after staying in the camper for roughly three weeks with six adults, two kids, and four dogs, it got real. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So, it was real. It got real. But it wasn't. It really wasn't bad. Because we may do. We, 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 we did what we had to do because of what we had to do. And, you know, so I started questioning, why is this happening? Why is this going on? Um, why, why didn't we buy a house 20 years ago when we had the ability to buy a house 20 years ago? And if we did buy that house 20 years ago, maybe my wife and my kids wouldn't be suffering going through the things that we're going through now because maybe things would have been a little bit better. So then we get to bring the camper home. We still had the campground at this point. So we get to bring the camper home back to the house, and I'm thinking, that's going to be great. And it was. We were home. But we weren't home. We were living in a camper where our home used to be. You know, when you open up the door to the camper and the two dogs hop down and go to the stairs and sit down and look at the door and look at you, look at the door and look at you, you're not home. And even the dogs are smart enough to figure that out. And so it, it, it still, it just wasn't good enough. It wasn't what we wanted. So then we had to tear down Sherry's dad's apartment and his actual shed that he had built with his own two hands. We were forced at that point in time to go through his belongings. And boy, he had some belongings. And it was his birthday that day. And so I just pictured him up there saying, ah, keep that. I might use that one day. Keep that. I might. This dude had 20 something gallons of paint. In five gallon buckets. I'd rather get beat up than paint. So, I, what do you do with 20 gallons of paint, right? So, it was the things that he had, the things that he had had built up. And, and so, we went through it. And then, so there you're dealing with all these emotions, you're dealing with everything that you went through back before, you're dealing with that again. So, what I want to share with you today is what the Lord's trying to teach me about faith, what He's trying to teach me about what's going on right now in my life. So I've been having a relationship with God now for, I'd say, about 18 years, a, a really heartfelt relationship. I've always known God all my life, but a real close relationship. And in this relationship, my wife has always told me, you know, there's just things that you have to give to God. You just got to give it to God. And now she's got Nikki on board. Well, Nikki will, oh, you have to give that to God. And it kind of drives me a little bit. It kind of works me a little bit when they say it because I know it's right. But there's sometimes that us as men, we want to fix everything. 
That's our job to fix stuff. And so I struggle with that sometimes. Because my problem is, is, is I give it to God, but I, I go fishing with God. And I don't mean you. <laughs> Me and Brother Tommy go fishing all the time. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> but I go fishing with God. And what I mean by that is 1 Peter 5 and 7 says what? To cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. I got no problem casting, Brother Tommy. But I always tend to reel it back in. I always tend to reel it back in. And then I struggle with it some more. And I may cast again, but I always reel back in. And the problem that we have with that is, is keep on going to, to 1 Peter 5 and 8 says what? Be alert and sober, sober minded for the enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone he can devour. So when you don't, dump that stuff off and let God handle it. When you don't allow this stuff to, to go away, the devil's sitting there and he's waiting and he's saying, why didn't you buy a house 20 years ago? He said, if you did, that your family wouldn't be suffering right now. So the devil's getting you. He's, he's playing in that mind. You know, it's, it's <laughs> when we lack faith or and not able to give things to God, he's, he's going to take over. And like I said, 20 years, we surely could have bought a house within that 20 years. So I'm beating myself up. And you know, last week, Pastor brought up something. He talked about surviving and thriving. So you think I wasn't paying attention. But too many times in life, we sit there and we, we, we just survive. And we just we allow that devil to come in. We allow that devil to start talking to us. We allow that devil just to, to beat us up when we're down. Instead of thriving and going out and finding that new house, putting bids on four or five of them, looking at 20, having somebody pay cash and stealing them from underneath you. And you're thinking, I'm going to be stuck in this camper with these four adults and two dogs now forever. <laughs> it's... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It became, it became that. It became very hard to, to deal with. So today, I want to look at a scripture. One scripture, um, and it, it basically tells us why we should trust God when our life doesn't make sense. Because, you see, as, as Christians, the only thing that we're called to do besides to be obedient is to please God. And with that being said, the Bible actually tells us a way that we can do just that. The Bible tells us how to do it. And so, which is crazy to think that, that, that even, even we can please an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God, to think that we can please Him. And so if you got your Bibles, um, go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And it's a, it's a simple verse, and, but that's where we're going to be. And so it says, now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And in different, different translations, it'll say diligently seeks him or earnestly seeks him. It'll, it'll, it'll throw the different ways out there. So what do we do when our life falls apart? Or it makes no sense. What do we do? So here, well there, it was saying that, <laughs> they got me good. It was saying that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Okay, so now without faith, it's impossible to please God. So this is interesting because somewhere in the Bible, it also says that there's nothing impossible for the person who believes but it's saying that this is impossible. So, it's impossible to please God without faith. And it pleases God with faith. So, one truth today. One thing that you can walk away from here and you're going to know. Faith pleases God. So, <laughs> if you're like me, when I'm trying to buy a gift for somebody or, or I'm trying to, we're going to say Sherry because Sherry's really the only person I buy gifts for. And so um, I'll ask the kids, hey, um, what do you think about this? Or hey, what do y'all think about this? 
And sometimes they tell me, and I still do what I want to do, but I asked. <laughs> and so one time I bought Sherry some pajamas. Remember that? <laughs> Guys, don't ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever buy your wife clothes if you don't know the size. <laughs> the pants were too big and the shirt was too small. Do you really think I'm that big? And it's like, whoa, okay. <laughs> So it causes, it causes issues, so you have to ask those questions, all right? And, and, and it was, uh, just don't do it. Clothes are out. Just don't do it. And I just wanted to please her. I wanted to make her happy. I wanted to get her something that she could really enjoy. And, you know, the thing behind it is, if, if that's how we act towards people, why don't we act that way towards God, do the same thing? Now, the Bible tells us that there is a way to please God. Do we do it? You know, it's crazy to think, again, that we could please God. How many of y'all ever said, man, I can't make nobody happy? I do it all the time when, when me and Sister Sherry, oh, I'm sorry I can't make you happy. And then rah, the claws come out and it just becomes fun. But it's, it's, how often do you say that? How, can you make everybody happy in this world? No, you can't. You can't do it. And so notice what the Bible is saying, though. It does, well, what it's not saying. It doesn't come out and say that without reading your Bible, it's impossible to please God. It's, it doesn't say that um, without remembering Scripture, it's impossible to please God. It don't say that... Um, Singing worship songs, without doing that, it's impossible to please God. It doesn't say any of that. God doesn't say any of that. Now, those things, those things are actually important, and, and they have meaning, and they have a purpose, but it doesn't say that. Faith is not so much for us to see the supernatural or the miracles, but it's, it's just despite the outcome. If, even if we're praying and we're praying in faith, despite the outcome that we have, God's got a plan. And I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But God has got a plan. Despite the outcome, we still need to have that faith. We still need to know what's going on. So at any time, a believer is not operating in faith, is displeasing to God. And so any time that we do worship songs and we're singing these songs about faith and we don't believe the song, it's not pleasing to God. You can preach the most polished message, the, the best message that you know about faith, but if you don't believe it, it's not pleasing to God. God is saying that basically it displeases Him if we're not operating in faith. So here's what faith is. Faith is holding on to a promise of God when life falls apart. Think about that. Holding on to the promise of God when, God when life falls apart. Faith is having an unwavering belief in God. Faith is, is I'm going to trust God in spite of the difficult things that are happening. And it can become a struggle at times when you lose your house after 51 years and you've got to start all over. It can become a struggle. And I'm not the only one. Brother Tommy, Sister Debbie are going through the same struggles as what the only problem is, is he's got to fix his. I was able to walk away from mine. So, poor thing, his struggle is a heck of a lot worse than mine, right? And, and so, we're all facing these struggles. We're all going through the difficult times. The Bible says that <coughs> we must draw near to God. So, here they're taking a priestly reference, and, and just kind of hear me out, from the Old Testament and bring it into the New. The idea of drawing near to God comes from a priest going into the uh, presence of God behind the Holy of Holies once a year. And coming into the presence of God. And only the priests could do this. So what's being said is that we now have access to God to draw near to Him boldly. Okay? Now, how do we do that? There's two things. One of them, we have to believe He exists. That's, that's, I mean, it, it's, it says that. We've got to believe that He exists. So you have to believe that God exists. That's simple, but not always. When you start having things or life that happens, God, where are you? 
I'm, I'm, I'm here alone. Where are you? Right? And, and so you have to believe that He exists. People say all the time that, man, I got faith. <clears throat> what, you, what, what do you got faith in? Faith in what? It's, everybody has faith, but what do you have faith in? People in the world have faith in a lot of things. Believe it or not, faith in government, faith in doctors, faith in politics. And I got LOL behind that one. But faith in politics. And I was just typing politics, LOL. So it, it just flowed. But faith in people. And, and, and the strange part is, is none of these things are going to help in any way. Having faith in all of that is fine. I had, you, you have faith in your father. I had faith in my dad. My dad could fix anything. He can still fix anything. I had faith. As little kids, we believe that our parents can do that. So as children of God, do we believe that our father can fix anything? Mm. Okay? So we need to have faith in one person. And who's that person? Jesus Christ, right? And so during the time of, of blessings, it seems that things are going well and, and, and everything's easy and we, we know that God exists. And then when things go wrong, those blessings aren't there anymore. And in that darkest season, we start to, to be tempted and maybe to doubt. When you're diagnosed with a terminal illness and you've got six months to live, mm, you, start, you start thinking, you start wondering, um, when you become just tempted or, or you, you, you say, I'm going to start tithing and you start rolling out that money at the church, right? And then you lose your job. It's like, really, God? <laughs> are you serious right now, right? And so you start doing things and then the rug gets pulled from underneath you. The thing that you got to realize, he's there. God's path is just not your path. So, the same faith that we have during good times will bring you through the trials. Hebrews 13 and 8 says what? God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, right? Okay. So think about this. This is a, I want you to think right now, if I ask you to stand up, don't stand up, but if I ask you to stand up and just survey the room and kind of look around and... Uh, you know, you're going to see me up here, of course. You're going to see the musical equipment. You look to the back, you'll see the sound booth. you see chairs in front of you. you see chairs behind you. People all over the place. And in the moment I tell you, we're going to turn out the lights, I turn out the lights, and it's cave dark, like Brother Jameson talked about two weeks ago. Cave dark, okay? That is, I can't see nothing. Can you have faith that the chair is still behind you? Can you sit down? Would you sit down? Without feeling back, would you? Why? Why do you know it's there? When? In the light. So, if you've seen it in the light, let me find, it says, so we should never doubt in the darkness what God has revealed to us in the light. So if he's given you all these good times and everything's going right and you know God exists and God is there and God is great, hallelujah, everything's good. We got a brand new house, y'all. The note is where we wanted it at. It's in a beautiful neighborhood. The people that we're buying it from is awesome. That's great. But it's going to... We, we've done signed so many papers and what ifs and this is and that's and, and no, we don't want to escrow this. We want to escrow that and this and that. I'm just waiting for something to be pulled from underneath us. And so the second thing is we have to believe that God rewards seekers. Okay, because, because it says, and he reward those who seeks him. So the word seek, talk about that. What does that mean? And in, in some cases it says diligently seeks him or earnestly seeks him. So seek, what does that mean? With mama eyes. You understand what I'm getting at? Like when we can't find nothing at the house, Sherry looks with mama eyes. And she always finds it. It was right where she put it. <laughs> she moved it. <clears throat> so <laughs> it's diligently seeking him. Just because you run after God doesn't mean life will turn out like you want it. Okay? 
So seeking God, if you're running after God, looking after God, trying to find God, doesn't mean life is going to turn out the way you have it planned. Because you see, God's plan ain't your plan. And there's a reason. So there was a reason that 20 years ago, I bought a double wide. And I love my house. And I'm not saying that living in a double wide trailer is any worse than living in a house, any better than living in a house. It was a house. It was a home. It was the only home that, that, that we knew. And it's gone. But God's got better plans. God's got something else that's coming. And so I wanted to read this, and it's, it's Hebrews 11, 32 through 38. Um, it says, in, What more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through what? Through faith, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Who shut the mouths of lions and quenched the fury of flames and escaped the edge of the sword. Whose weakness was turned into strength and who became powerful in battle and routed, and routed foreign enemies. Women received their dead back and raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refused to uh, be released, re refusing to be released, and that might gain even better resurrection. Some face jeers and flogging. What is jeers and flogging? Come on, y'all. All right, so jeers is um, rude remarks, being talked to rudely. And flogging, I know about, is being hit repeatedly with a stick or a belt. Don't laugh, it ain't funny. <laughs> My dad. <laughs> being hit repeatedly with a belt. Being hit with a stick, okay? I was not abused, just to let y'all know. I was not. I deserved everything I got. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskin, persecuted and mistreated. The word was not worthy of them. They wandered in the desert in the mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what the Lord had promised. Since God is, God is planning something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So what is God saying here? When we trust in God and we have faith, sometimes he'll raise the dead. Sometimes he just lets you die. And there's a reason behind it. There's a purpose behind it. There's, there's, you know, we don't always understand. And I, and I say this all the time, Brother Warren Sion. He said, I know God's got a plan. I don't understand it, but I trust him. And sometimes it's not easy to trust him. So with, with that, what I'm, what I'm learning is sometimes that when we pray to God in faith, it doesn't always turn out the way we want it to go. Because it's like I said before, sometimes God's plan <laughs> ain't your plan. Okay? And there's a purpose behind it. I used, we used to tell the kids all the time about blessings. You know, sometimes God will have blessings prepared for you, but you're not prepared for God's blessings. And so, same scenario here. So, think about, you know, Pastor brought up last week about Paul. He was given a message from Satan, a thorn in his side. And how many times did he pray? To ask for forgiveness. Not once, not twice, but three times. And what did God say? My grace is sufficient for thee. Then what? Because my power is made perfect in your weakness. So sometimes people see us as Christians struggling. And how do you keep going? Sister Donna was... <laughs> was that in flesh walking on this earth. That woman was diagnosed with a terminal illness, and she walked around here with more faith and positive than me. I'm like, how? How is that possible? She had God. She had the faith of God to continue to push along. Now, think about this and draw comfort from this. Jesus didn't get his prayers answered all the time either. <laughs> Jesus prayed to the Father in the garden. He said, Daddy, if there's any way for this cup to pass, 
If there's any other way that this can happen, let's not my will, but your will. And the Bible says what? He prayed not once, not twice, but three times. And the end result was there's no other way. So who do you think you are? <laughs> you cry, you moan, you groan, and I resemble that remark. When I say you, I'm talking about me, about a house, about a vehicle that may be wrecked, about the small things, the simple things. When even my Jesus, our Jesus, went through this struggle, prayed for it in faith, and payao, okay? Keep that in mind. Being a Christian does not make you immune from pain and suffering. It does not. Sometimes it does what? <laughs> Makes that struggle a little bit harder each and every day. As you grow closer and closer, you know what's going on. But it's the folks around you that they're watching. I'm telling you right now, they're watching. Once I sent off for those credentials, I was very scared. We laughed and joked about it. The name, I don't know, what was the name? No, not AGIA, the uh, the name that Reverend, you gave me a name, and I don't remember what it was. But but it's, it's, it's funny because once people know that you're a pastor, once people know that you have a relationship with God, what happens? They're watching. <laughs> and they're waiting. You know, you kiss your kids with that mouth? <laughs> you, do you do that? They, they're watching, okay? And so it's, it's, it's important that we understand that. That is probably going to get a little tougher. But we have something as a Christian that non-Christians don't. And that's a companion, right? So you're not gonna you're not gonna walk this alone. Every time that struggle is there, by faith we know that God is with us. He's there with us in the good. He's there with us in the bad. So I know this. In the last two months, uh, was some of the hardest times in, in all of our lives. But there's been a few of you guys here that knew exactly what to say in those times. Like exactly, like I would call Tommy in the afternoon, bro, we had to tear down that shed, we had to do this, we had to do that, and he was like, yeah, well, I'm working 12 hours, and uh, I come home after, and, and I had, I'm like, <laughs> one upper, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like everybody, everybody has their own, their own issues, their own, their own things, and, and <laughs> but you guys, but that put me in check. Every time I've talked to you, brother, we're praying for you. We love you. And, and, and each one of y'all in here had, had your own thing to say, your own way of reaching out to us. And, and it helped. It helped tremendously to get us through the things that we were going through. So you see, the Bible never offers an explanation to cope with life's problems. It offers promises of God to cling to. Now, there's explanations you, know, you want to know why the world's so jacked up, why things are going on? It's, read the Bible, the end times. It's coming. We know it. We hear about it. It's coming. So that's a given. But it don't say in the Bible that Duaneth porcheth shall loseth his houses. That, that's not in there. Yeah, the yeareth of 20th and 21. You know, it doesn't come out and say that, but what it does say is that, hang on, I got you. You know? Hang on, my my grace is sufficient for thee. Hold on, brother, just hold strong, and that's what it's saying. So if again, if 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 you go to the world for for to, to the word for explanation of why this is happening, you may never find it. If you go in the Bible, you may never find as to why it's happening, but you will have those promises of God to being able to cling to. So, Scripture says, since. The one who draws near to me, near to him, must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So when you seek God with all your heart and faith, through faith, he doesn't give you something. He gives you someone. OK, and God is both the rewarder and the reward for seeking. So, Sister Debbie, if you want to come on up. Hebrews 6.19 says that we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. 
It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. So behind the curtain or the veil is, or the veil is where the presence of God was. Presence of God was. No one could enter behind that veil except for one man on one day, which was the festival of the Day of Atonement. And because Jesus died and ripped that veil, now we have that ability. We have that ability to be able to, to go to God, to be able to have that close relationship with God, to be able to, to lean on Him when we need Him. The anchor is amazing. The anchor is what? It's something that's immovable. I can't tell you how many anchors we lost fishing. Once it grabs, it's there. <laughs> okay? It's immovable. So when the waves and the winds of life threaten, the anchor holds. When fear comes, when you're struggling, the anchor holds. When doubt starts to run through your mind, of, are you serious? What's going on? Why is this happening? The anchor holds. When you lose your home, after 51 years, the anchor holds. And we got to be able to lean on that anchor. We got to be able to have that faith to be able to continue going. Because you see, faith pleases God. And God is there with you. God was there with us through all of this. God was there with us through COVID. You know, I cannot, un I cannot explain COVID and I cannot explain why. I can't explain if you should get a vaccine, if you shouldn't get a vaccine. I can't explain if you should do this or do that or whatever you should do. I can't, but I know God's got a plan. I don't quite understand it, but I trust Him. And so I know there are people in here that are struggling. People in here that are struggling with COVID. The fear of COVID alone. You know, I have some loved ones in my life that took the shot and it gave them back their freedom. And that's amazing. To be able to live life without fear. To be able to do the things that, that, that they used to do. To be able to, to just live. That's amazing. That's God's plan for them. With this house, y'all, when I tell you we looked at 20-something houses, we looked at 20-something houses. We put a bid on one, somebody came in with cash and bought it from underneath us. <clears throat> that was a little hard to swallow for me, but that wasn't the house for us. Because you see, God's got a better house for us. And when I walked into this house, there's an office. I walked into the office and there was a sign above the, above the office that it says, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. So you know. You know that you know that you know. If any of y'all know, that's one of the songs that I sing up here. And I'm like, I close the door and I'm like, this is the house. <laughs> and Sherry's like, leave him alone, y'all. He's having a moment. And, and, and But that's what allowed me to know that it was a God thing. God has got a plan. Trust him. Allow that anchor to snag. And he's going to hold you. But you got to trust him. No matter what. No matter how bad it gets. Again, I know there's people in here that are suffering. People that have lost homes. People that are, are just maybe struggling with illness. Struggling with um, whatever it may be. Just the world. And y'all, I... Pastor, if it's okay, I'd like to open the altar right now. And Pastor, come up. Pastor Tommy, come up. Pastor Ronnie. And allow us to pray with you. Allow us to be able to show you what praying in faith, because I know <laughs> what he can do. You may not see it today. You may not see it tomorrow. But what's going to happen is when you see it and you feel it, you're going to be like, that's what that dude was talking about. This is what he was talking about. People with illnesses need to be prayed upon. People who lost loved ones that are still struggling need to be prayed upon. People who are having house issues that are working tirelessly day in and day out need to be prayed upon. People who are struggling need to be prayed upon. People who just had an anniversary of 18 years need to be prayed upon it's real that's what faith in, in our God does it allows us to be able to stand up here and pray make that marriage even better than what it is now 
can make that, that hurt just a little bit easier. The losing of the house can make that even a little bit easier. So again, anybody, illness, anything, I invite you to come up. As he was preaching, you know, I can't help but think that you may not have been in your house, but wherever there's Sherry's peanut butter bush, <laughs> you are home. <laughs> Amen. And it's, it's, it's who we live with that's our home. And the people that God has blessed us with is our home. And I was thinking actually on this this morning and, and I just, I just had a moment last night because I found out that a class member, classmate of ours, passed away. Her name is Mary Barber. Mary, to look at Mary, was to look at someone who smiled all the time and who had joy all the time and who just went through life without a care. She was my age, 57, died of a heart attack just suddenly. And it helped me to remember what's important what's standing right next to you right now and sitting in that seat over next to you right now. Your house is not important as your mate or your family. Your job is not important as your mate or your family. Remember that before you leave here today. Nothing else matters. If you got Jesus, you got your family, you have life and that more abundantly. There are those who are lost buildings but still have a home. Those who have lost much but still have Jesus. That's everything you need. But I just feel like just God wants to remind you, go home and be thankful for what you have in your hands. Not necessarily for God loves us all. And with, with, with faith, believing Him for anything, all things are possible. I'm not going to preach, but I'll say this. I appreciate this message because it reminds us that faith is not to be equated with just getting and getting and getting. God will supply what we ask for in faith. But if we remember that the priority of faith is faith exists so that we can give, give, give to Him. I forget about finances. Give of ourselves to Him. And to have the faith to be servants for Him, diligently seeking Him, and He will provide for us. Amen. You know the Lord? Amen. I'm not going to say anything. Amen. And Brother Wayne's going to dismiss us in prayer. Father, today we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for, for the message. We thank you for the people that it touched, Lord God. Father, I would ask again that you would bless every household represented here, Lord God. Anyone who is suffering, Father, for anything, Lord God. And as Pastor said, Father, it's not about the house. It's not about anything other than pleasing you today. Because we can please you. The all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God, we can please you. And so, Father, today... Bless every household represented here. Father, bless every soul, Father, in this place. Allow us to be able to go out today, Father God, as we leave here and tell someone about you. Father, we thank you and we praise you today in Jesus' name.